This presentation focuses on one of the best children's book authors of the 20th century, Ms. Beverly Cleary. My name is Lisa McInnes. This is for my Lisa McRae class, EDU 351. Beverly Bunn Cleary was born in McMahonville, Oregon and celebrated her centennial birthday on April 12, 2016. The qualities of her childhood that she exhibits in her writing were learned from her very own childhood. She was raised in a time and place where children were taught that the world was a safe and beautiful place and where children were tolerated and shown kindness and patience. When she was six years old, Cleary's family moved from their small town of Yamville to Portland, Oregon due to the financial hardships on their farm. Young Beverly was very excited about the move to the city, but found herself out of place in school. She had to miss so much school due to having the chicken pox that she fell behind in reading. Cleary told one interviewer, the first grade was separated into three reading groups, bluebirds, redbirds, and blackbirds. I was a blackbird. To be a blackbird was to be a disgrace. Her small hometown of Yamville had no true library, so after she moved to Portland, Beverly was very excited to be able to spend hours and hours in a large room filled full of books. She often had a hard time finding books of interest. Finally, with the help of a librarian, she found a book that aroused her interest and opened the door for her to read more and more. Eventually, when Beverly was in the seventh grade, she began creative writing, and the librarian suggested that she should become a children's book author. The book that was responsible for sparking her interest in reading for pleasure was The Dutch Twins by Lucy Fitch Perkins. This was a story about two ordinary children and their adventures. After taking the book home to read, by the time she was ready for bed, she had completely finished The Dutch Twins as well as The Swiss Twins. Reading became Beverly's release from her fears and worries and brought her much happiness. After completing high school, Beverly went on to earn her BA in English at the University of California, Berkeley in 1938. She continued her education, earning her BA to become a librarian from the University of Washington, Seattle the next year. Her first job as a librarian was in Yakima, Washington. This is where she learned what children wanted to read and hear about. She had known from the seventh grade that she wanted to write books, and now she knew exactly what they wanted to read about. After marrying her husband, Clarence, in 1940, they moved to Oakland, California. In 1955, they had a set of twins, Marianne and Malcolm. Clarence encouraged her to write a book after she began to work in the children's book department of a Berkeley bookstore. After being surrounded by so many books, she felt like she could write better than those that she saw on the shelves. Cleary stated to her husband her desire to write a book, to which he replied, Why don't you? Her response? because we never have any sharp pencils. So the next day, Clarence came home with a pencil sharpener. Clearly began her first book, Henry Huggins, on January 2nd. She completed this book in just two short months. Because Henry Huggins wasn't like any other book at the time, it was picked up by William Morrow and Company and published in six short weeks. The books of the time presented children as goody-goody or unrealistic tales of children who solved crimes or lived in wealthy relatives' magical castles. Beverly Cleary didn't stop there, though. She went on to write 38 more timeless classics like Beezus and Ramona and Ramona the Pest. She has sold over 91 million copies worldwide, and that's just short of the Harry Potter series at 120 million. Her books have stayed in print and are still loved by kids today. Here's a short excerpt from one of my favorite books, Ramona the Pest, Chapter 1, Ramona's Great Day. I am not a pest, Ramona Quimby told her big sister Beezus. Then stop acting like a pest, said Beezus, whose real name was Beatrice. She was standing by the front window waiting for her friend Mary Jane to walk to school with her. I am not acting like a pest. I'm singing and skipping, said Ramona, who had only recently learned to skip with both feet. Ramona did not think that she was a pest. No matter what others said, she never thought she was a pest. The people who called her a pest were always bigger, so they could be unfair. Ramona went on with her singing and skipping. This is a great day, this is a great day, this is a great day, she sang, 
And to Ramona, who was feeling grown up in a dress instead of play clothes, this was a great day, the greatest day of her whole life. No longer would she have to sit on her tricycle watching Beezus and Henry Huggins and the rest of the boys and the girls in the neighborhood go off to school. Today, she was going to school, too. Today, she was going to learn to read and write and do all the things that would help her catch up with Beezus. The love of writing came easily to Beverly once she discovered that children wanted to read about things they could relate to. Her style of reading was based from her own personal experiences as a child growing up. Beverly Cleary's writing technique was to simply use a pen pencil and a yellow legal pad. This is how she started, and this is how she has written every single manuscript. Interestingly, she began her first book, Henry Huggins, on January 2nd, and each book afterwards was started on that same date. She has based her books off of the neighborhood that she grew up in, and the circumstances in everyday life on Klickitat Street in Portland became very real to her readers that found comfort in the stories that took them away from their own problems, even if it was just for a short while. Her most beloved character grew from one who was developed to be a minor character, Ramona Quimby, the little sister to Beezus, actually called Beatrice. The Clearies lived next door to a girl named Ramona, who had been called for one day while they were all outside playing. So that is where the name Ramona came from. The cut-up character of Otis Spofford was based on a lively boy who sat across from Cleary in the sixth grade. And the Chinese immigrant, Fong Kwok, is a central figure in Emily's runaway imagination. This character was inspired from a Chinese neighbor man that came to work on the railroad in Oregon and had eventually planned to return to China. Clary pointed out that her popularity was probably because she wrote to entertain, not to teach anything. DEAR stands for Drop Everything and Read, a national month-long celebration of reading designed to remind folks of all ages to make reading a priority activity in their lives. The programs have started to be held on April 12th nationwide in honor of Miss Clary. The Beverly Cleary Sculpture Garden is located on the west side of Grant Park in northeast Portland, Oregon, where Cleary played as a child. It consists of three bronze statues grouped around a splash fountain. The figures represent three beloved characters from her books, Ramona Quimby, Henry Huggins, and Henry's dog, Ribsy. The Sculpture Garden is one of the few memorials in the United States that's dedicated to a children's book author. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation of Beverly Cleary, one of my favorite authors, and I hope one of yours also.